All right, we're going to talk uh, now to uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Atticott. He is a full professor of law and the director of the Center for Terrorism Law at St. Mary's University School of Law, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, an active duty Army officer in the Judge Advocate General Corps for 20 years, Professor Atticott spent a quarter of his career as the legal the senior legal advisor of the United States Army's Special Forces as an internationally recognized authority on national security and terrorism law. Professor Atticott not only lectures and participates in professional and academic organizations, both in this country and abroad, he actually has given over 900 speeches. But he also testifies sometimes before Congress on a variety of issues, He's a regular contributor to national and international news media outlets as well. So he's on the line with me right now, Professor Atticott. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing well this morning? Absolutely. That's great. You're going to be in border at uh, the Hutchinson County Republican Women's a special meeting that they're having this coming Thursday night, the 25th. And uh, you're going to be speaking on what topic? Uh, we're going to be talking about the war on terror and uh, President Trump's approach to the war on terror and contrast that, of course, with uh, the previous administration and how they conducted uh, you know, their policies both domestically and internationally. Uh, yeah, there is quite a contrast between those two presidencies. <laughs> so I'm sure you have plenty to talk about. Uh, what are uh, some of the little maybe bullet points that people can expect to hear from you? I know that the lecture itself will probably go, what, an hour, something like that, probably? Yeah, you know, law professors, we can talk for hours. But, uh, <laughs> it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be uh, as long as people can, uh, uh, can keep raising their hands. And, of course, uh, part of the issue when you talk about this topic is there's two icebergs. Uh, one is, of course, our president's pension for... Uh, a hyperbolic language, I guess you might want to call it. He has his own style, obviously. Yeah. And then two, of course, is the absolute uh, hatred that the mass uh, media or the mainstream media has against President Trump. Uh, everything he says is denigrated. Everything he does is uh, disregarded. And so that's a reality that you have to deal with when you assess, you know, how Trump has done in the first year of his presidency. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is he's done fantastic. I would give him an A-plus as a law professor, and yet the media gives him no credit whatsoever for the wonderful things that he's accomplished. Yeah, and by the way, uh, in case people didn't catch you from my brief introduction, uh, Professor Atticott, is, to, to get that kind of an accolade from him, is uh, that's, that's quite a, a compliment because he's a distinguished professor of law at St. Mary's University School of Law, in San Antonio, where he has taught civil procedure, medical malpractice, comparative law, administrative law, criminal law, constitutional criminal law, national security law, and terrorism law, I, I've come to the conclusion, Professor, that you must be about 220 years old. <laughs> I'm going I'm to have a great looking tune with them. They're going to chisel all sorts of stuff on there. Um, you know, the, the bottom line on this administration is that, you know, being in the military, and uh, having four combat experiences, there's three things you've got to do if you're going to win a war. You've got to identify the enemy, you've got to identify their center of gravity, and you've got to crush them. Excuse me, you've got to crush them. That's how you win a war. Uh, President Obama was unwilling to identify the enemy as like a Harry Potter movie. Correct. Under his administration, the word that must not be said, which is radical Islam. Yeah. Uh, this president early on identified who the enemy was. He identified their center of gravity, which at the time was ISIS. Uh, that's the largest poison limb on this poison tree, and he crushed them. I mean, he absolutely obliterated them geographically from the face of the earth. Isn't that something? Yeah, this past year has been a really bad year for ISIS. Uh, let me ask you a question, by the way, while we're on that subject. Why, why did Obama insist on always referring to them as ISIL? Yeah, you know, I, I think once you make a mistake, and I think the first time he did it, it was probably a mistake. But, uh, you know, he refused to uh, correct himself, and therefore it's going to be ISIL no matter what the rest of the world calls it. He's going to call it ISIL, which is very curious to me. Uh, you know, that stands for, even ISIS doesn't call themselves ISIL. They call themselves uh, da 
ISH or ISIS, or IS or ISIS. Uh, very few references in terms of ISIL. Uh, I could never figure that out. In fact, there's many things that President Obama did that you'd scratch your head and you'd, you'd say, what is this person doing? Uh, in Afghanistan, for example, I remember very distinctly when he first took office, he was asked by CNN, a reporter, they said, how do you define victory? And he said, I'm not comfortable with that word. Really? You know, Whoa. oh, yeah. I mean, how do you win a war when you can't even define victory? Yeah. I'm a, well, the country's in a lot different uh, condition today than it was a year ago. What, what would it be like now if we'd had Hillary Clinton in there the last year? Well, I can't even think about it. I would assume she would uh, do the same policies that President Obama did. Uh, I don't believe we would have uh, crushed ISIS as we have crushed ISIS. I believe she would continue with the same policies of not identifying radical Islam. She would uh, obviously uh, you know, not have done uh, the things that we need to do to confront China and to establish our presence uh, and to confront North Korea and their growing ambitions on our land. The world would be a far, far more dangerous place with Hillary Clinton, in my opinion. Yeah. But of course, that's unknowable. But based on her rhetoric and uh, and her uh, incompetent performance as Secretary of State, I would say it would be pretty bad. Well, I know that uh, you've indicated we've made a lot of progress uh, in the last year, but uh, can you give us kind of a an idea of how serious the threat of terrorism is to our homeland? Well, that's the other part of the good news package for President uh, Trump is because if you look at the statistics for 2017 and you look at the statistics for 2015, the number of arrests of radical jihadists in this country, domestic jihad, and the number of attacks in this country has been cut in half. And that's because of what President Trump has done in terms of destroying ISIS, because these jihadists that live amongst us are no longer inspired. Because the narrative that God's on our side, that ISIS always put out, they can't use that narrative anymore because they have been obliterated. There's only about probably 3,000 of them left, and they have been driven out into the desert. So they're not even around anymore. And that's, that's part of the good news story um, in, in terms of our domestic condition. But they're still here amongst us. Um, but my big concern is not so much the domestic jihadists here in this country, and they're still here, well, my biggest concern really is Iran. Hmm. Okay. Let me uh, ask you a little bit, uh, uh, instead of going down the road there with Iran, something that's on my mind and our time is running low, is the sanctuary cities. That bothers me a whole lot. Uh, and I, I see that as a serious threat to our country uh, because so many of them, even the entire state of California, is... Uh, in an effort to show Obama that he's not their boss, have uh, have made it even more uh, sanctuary cities for these illegal immigrants than they were before. What can we do yeah, about I that? Mean, Address that a little you know, bit. You know, yeah, this all started under President Obama and partly under President George W. Bush is because the federal government refused to enforce federal law. And so states got emboldened, and they said, well, if Obama's not going to enforce the federal law, then we're going to increase our standing in terms of sanctuary cities. And then President Trump, of course, when he said, I'm going to enforce, enforce federal law, uh, they just doubled down. So there's a friction here between what the states are doing and what federal law is. And federal law is responsible for enforcing the border. So uh, something has to be done. And uh, it's going to come to a boiling plate because you can't allow states to create their own laws in conflict with federal law. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we fought a civil war over that issue where states decided that they wanted to do what they wanted to do. Uh, states do have certain states' rights and powers, but they don't have the power to, to thumb their nose at federal law, particularly because illegal immigration affects us all. It just doesn't affect one state. They enter into one state, get a sanctuary city, and then migrate to other states. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's exactly right, yeah. For sure, they won't stay in California or the other sanctuary cities. They'll, they'll come out to where the rest of us are. Uh, anyway, go back to Iran just for a moment. We've still got a, a minute or two here. Um, and the, uh, the threat from Iran is, uh, put it in a nutshell for us and, and take it and yeah. uh, address it. Well, first of all, I, I founded the Center for Terrorism Law uh, when 9-11 occurred at the law school, 
And uh, a year before that, I'd written a chapter in a book for the War College where I predicted 9-11 was going to occur. And people said, man, how did you know that? You're a genius. No, no, not really. If, if someone says they're going to punch you in the face, they're going to punch you in the face. Iran every year has a Death to America march. If they get nuclear weapons, then the cost of, of stopping them increases exponentially. And that's something that has to be done. The time to stop them is before they get nuclear weapons. Absolutely. Not after they get nuclear weapons. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you've, you've got a book out, your latest book. You've got a lot of books out. You've published, what, 60 books and articles? 60 books. Yes, sir. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, your recent, uh, is this your most recent book, Radical Islam, Why? Can it, it is, and I'll have some, I'm going to bring some with me on Thursday night. I encourage people to come out. Uh, again, a lot of my critics, they go, well, Attica, you don't give the other side of issues. And my answer is, you live in the other side. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give you the side that you don't hear. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've heard the other side way too many times already. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Atticott's going to be at Frank Phillips College Auditorium this coming Thursday night at 6.30. And by the way, I'm, uh, I've been uh, given some tickets to give away so some people can get free admission if they, are, uh, if they want to contact us for one of those free tickets while they last. You can give us a call, and we'll uh, furnish you with them as long as our supply of 10 tickets last for this uh, lecture from Professor Atticott. I uh, wish I could be there. I have something else on my schedule for that night, Professor, but I've enjoyed talking to you today, and I would hope that they would be able to record it so I could hear it later. Yeah, I think I think they can. I'm going to break some of my books, and I'm going to give away as well. Um, so even if you buy the admission ticket, you've got a chance to uh, come out ahead if you uh, win the uh, one of the raffles for the for the books I'm bringing. I can assure people they will not be bored, and they will be glad that they made the effort to come this coming Thursday night. Thank you for taking a little time to talk with me on the radio this morning. My pleasure. All right. We'll talk again sometime. Thank you, Professor. Goodbye. Yes, sir. All right, Professor Jeffrey Atticott. Very interesting. Fighting for heroes, heroes who fight for us. That is the military justice mission of the uh, St. Mary's University Center for Terrorism Law, where he is a professor and a professor of law and the director for the Center for Terrorism Law at St. Mary's University School of Law in San Antonio.